Thanks very much. Uh, okay, uh, I'll just get started. Really, what I'm doing is giving you an update on uh, what the current state of play of the project is and the developments since the last time we reported in October. Well, a colleague of mine did it, did it for me, and so I appreciate that. Um, within the project team, uh, we have a kind of a monitoring tool that we use to judge how the project is going at any given stage, uh, and this is basically it. Um, perhaps because perhaps because it was tending towards the, the this side of the spectrum, that might explain why there's not so many people close to me. But no, I mean, more seriously, I'll give you an update. I also submitted, as well as the slides, uh, a little report, which I hope was passed on to you, which gives you some kind of details of some of the challenges we faced and how we responded to those, and uh, so hopefully you've got a copy of that. But um, essentially I'm going to look at some of the, the key elements, the development of materials, um, talk a little bit about the website as well that we're working on, and uh, some of the other kind of activities have been going on, a lot of activities around the kind of dissemination and communication. Um, what's been Amazing for us in a project team is just the sheer amount of interest that the project has provoked uh, internationally as well, not just nationally. And uh, that has presented lots of challenges. It means that we've been asked to do lots of things and participate in lots of joint projects, which is, which is good, but also quite a challenge. Uh, and I'll talk briefly as well about the student partnership projects, which, as I've said before, I think uh, is one of the things that uh, we've, we're really pleased with, actually, in terms of the level of commitment and involvement that we've seen from the student body. And we didn't quite anticipate how positively it was going to be received at the beginning of the project, so we're really delighted. Anyway, enough of that. <laughs> Let's uh, cut to the chase. Uh, these are the kind of main areas I'm just going to kind of present on um, today. Um, as you know, we have our metro map metaphor that we've been using throughout the project. Uh, and one of the key aspects of that metro map is the stations. And the stations on the map correspond to um, topics to do with digital skills and the application of digital technologies in uh, higher education. Um, and so what's been key for us is to develop content and materials for each of those stations. So we have been doing that. We've been developing lots of, um, I suppose, introductory online multimedia interactive lessons. Uh, someone can work through in their own time, independently, individually. And if they fulfill the criteria set and the little activities and the quiz, they're awarded a digital badge. And then there's a second level of skills development, which is really where somebody actually has to do something and demonstrate that they've got that skill, demonstrate that they're capable of producing whatever the, the digital artifact is relevant to that station. And those, those also have badges associated with them, but those badges are awarded by people who run workshops. What we're doing for that is specifying the criteria for the badges and providing downloadable workshop material that, that can be used in a variety of uh, institutions and contexts. Um, so we've got quite a number of the lessons developed, um, and I'll show you maybe, we've got a little bit of time if we have, um, I can show you what some of those look like. Um, what we're doing is making sure that we release them in batches as opposed to just trickling them out one at a time. So uh, we're aiming for a, a fairly significant release of the lessons themselves, plus the new website, in time for the, the All Aboard Week. Uh, in April, and we're on track for that, which is good to know. <laughs> it's good for me. So our website has, this is the website that we'll be using to host the finished products as opposed to the project website. Um, that's undergone an awful lot of development since we last met. Very positively, it's been uh, improved, we think, in terms of the background technology, the layout, the look and feel, and how we integrate it with things like the digital badge issuing platform and the multimedia lessons. Uh, so there's been a huge amount of work being done to refine that, and we also would like to acknowledge the support of, of uh, Colin Lowry on the, in the National Forum uh, in terms of setting up our server for us and so forth. So we can have, maybe we can pop out and have a little look at some of those things, actually. Is this, if I can find it. Yeah, so that's, okay, so the, the, uh, it's a, a little bit enlarged here, but that's what the, 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 the website looks like. We've, we've made it, we hope, relatively simple. It's a clear-cut explanation. Uh, there's a link to our digital 
confidence profiling tool. So that's what's shown here. So people would actually click on that, answer a few questions, and it gives you a sort of a graphical representation of where you think your strengths and, and weaknesses are in each of the, the domains corresponding to our uh, metro lines. If we just scroll down, there's a link to the map and so forth, some information about the stations. And the travel cards, if you remember, the travel cards is our way of continuing that metaphor. It's really essentially you can build up a course. Uh, so you can look at the map and construct a little mini course by selecting stations across the various lines and you build what's called a, a travel card, uh, which is issued as a digital badge once you've completed all the, the, the listed stations. So that's just a, a, a look at it. We've, we've simplified the, the, the structure as well. Platform one is just the first page, and the one that's showing, the link to the map. And then the stations, as we produce them, will be listed in, in, in that link. Uh, and, and then we have the travel cards and an overview. So it's a much simpler structure than uh, our current project website and an earlier idea. Uh, if you were to go to one of the stations, we saw a very kind of shrunken down version of the content earlier on the PowerPoint. This is what it looks like. It's relatively clear, I hope. Um, that's a particular topic, visitors and residents. So in that case, there's a link to an interactive lesson. There's downloadable uh, Creative Commons materials. There's also lots of little kind of sec sections that explain how you can use this in a workshop, uh, where you can get the materials for, what the licensing conditions are. Um, and everything we produce is, is released under Creative Commons. Um, and also links to other resources. So that's the structure. And here's another example, uh, another lesson, this one on digital images. Uh, so basic ideas how, of how digital images work and, and uh, useful information. Again, those lessons are badged. Now the lessons, um, there are a variety of kind of formats. We've, most of the ones that we've created or repurposed from other content um, have been developed in Articulate Storyline. So we've, we've tested out with the various user communities what the, the look and feel should be like. And, and we do have um, a structure agreed and uh, a fairly simple uh, means of editing and authoring these. We have a style guide and so forth. And uh, I don't need to go into the details, I suppose. But we have, at the moment, um, about 13 lessons that are uh, completed. And what we're doing now is just integrating them into the badging system. So that's just to give you an idea of it. But if I maybe pop back into uh, PowerPoint, if you don't mind. Sorry. <laughs> Here we go. Let's move on. The next thing is the student partnership. And as I say to you, we're really pleased about the student partnership. It's certainly been a, a, a lot of energy uh, uh, amongst the student communities and, and the partner institutions. Uh, and also we have lots of queries uh, beyond the partner network. Uh, some of the things that are captured here, the photographs there on the, on the left-hand side are actually of an event that took place in UCD when they completed their digital ambassadors project or program. This is where students were given uh, training in a whole range of different digital skills to a fairly high level, uh, and they worked in internships across different sections of the university, uh, and they did this for a year. It's a year-long program there, and then were awarded certification at the end. So this is mar marking the certification event. Uh, and they're, it's digital as well as a paper <laughs> certification. Uh, the other little graphic there, which looks pretty poor, but when it's not shrunken down, is in uh, NUI Galway, the student digital champions, which is a variant of that model, uh, has also been very busy. And we've uh, got about 40 students now who are trained as digital champions who offer their services around the university for various things like uh, conferences and events that are taking place on the university campus. They provide, for example, a social media team. If you're running a conference, they will handle your Twitter stream for you uh, and, and all sorts of things like that. Uh, so they've built up their skills and their confidence. But the, the graphic there is that we, I think we mentioned we were going to do this last time. We released the, what's called the eye test survey tool, which was developed in uh, the University of Exeter originally, but used by a number of UK universities. And it's really looking at digital skills and digital confidence among students. And we've piloted it uh, amongst students in the digital champion scheme in uh, NUI Galway. And we got 
over a thousand uh, responses, uh, which is quite good considering it's a 36 question survey. <laughs> um, and there's over a thousand were, were completed. So that's been really useful for us. It's given us an indication as to the sort of kind of issues amongst the student communities. We've looked at uh, the extent to which there might be variation, that, and there are some variations. As, for example, in the year of study, as you might imagine, also there are some gender variations as well. Uh, and we can talk about them if you want to know. Uh, there's also, we've you know, been able to, to clarify that how the diversity, I guess, of confidence levels that students have. And that's really important because, as we've said many times before, you know, the myth of the digital native is really a, a barrier, actually, to digital skills training in many cases. And so we can clearly show that it's, that it's a myth. Uh, by these kinds of surveys, uh, and it's very interesting also to see the extent to which students themselves feel um, that they are under pressure with regards to technology. Well, a significant proportion of the students, for example, feel that, they, um, that technology is a distraction for when they're wanting to study, uh, and also a number of, of students feel uh, that they don't have the confidence that they, f they feel they're meant to have or they're expected to have. So it's been a very useful uh, survey and what we're going to do is, is uh, extend that more widely uh, across the, the collaborating institutions and maybe even further afield. But we're still, we're still analysing some of the findings. So that's been really useful. Uh, in terms of the dissemination and so forth, as I mentioned, we've had lots of requests to participate in various events and work with other groups, which has been good, <laughs> been exciting, uh, but also quite challenging to fit in. Uh, so there's just some of them there. Uh, in December, for example, we were shortlisted for um, an international award that's run by QS uh, the rankings agency and the Wharton School of Business at the University of Pennsylvania, they run this Reimagine Education conference with awards associated with it. So it was good to be shortlisted. It's a pity we didn't win, but you know, the quality of their panel obviously needs some. Oh no, we're being straight. Um, no, it was very, very useful actually. The event was really good because we got to talk to other, other projects uh, from all around the world. So that was actually quite interesting from that perspective. Um, in terms of winning the prizes, uh, just, just to be clear about it, uh, they're a very high standard, and most of the projects that were being considered in the final stages were projects that completed uh, evaluation studies and that sort of thing. Uh, and also commercial products, which is kind of unusual to see that mix. Um, we also presented at uh, Online Educa Berlin, uh, a session there on student engagement and participation and digital confidence and digital skills. Uh, we presented at the HENET National Conference. We have a chapter in uh, Education Matters, which is a sort of yearbook of the education sectors in, in Ireland. Uh, and also, just uh, the other week, uh, I was involved in, in the kind of final drafting of DigComp Edu um, at the European Commission's Joint Research Centre in Seville. And so that's trying to come up with a European framework for digital skills for educators at all levels. So it's, these are, yeah, thanks. So these are just some of the things we've done since we last spoke in October. Um, and, and it's been very, very busy on that, on that front. Um, obviously, we've been involved very much in the planning for the Digital Skills Week in April. And now that it's called All Aboard 2017, just to add to the pressure on that little kind of indicator that I put up earlier. But that's great to see. And it's very good to see the, the level of uh, you know, um, participation, collaboration. We've also impacted a little bit more widely um, in terms of the badging. It's really interesting to see now there are quite a number of institutions in Ireland that are committing now to using digital badges in their programmes or in their co-curricular activities. One particular example we've had a lot of discussion with is UCC, and I mentioned them because uh, they were not part of our consortium, but they were interested, and they've done a lot of work with us in terms of you know how you can use badges, and they've 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 gone ahead and implemented it, brought in a policy, brought in a, a structure for how badges are issued. So that's that. That's pleasing to us because it's impact beyond the, beyond the initial uh, collaboration. Um, so we're kind of in the final stages, I suppose. As I say, we have a target to complete uh, a batch of lessons, about 13, probably about 14 actually, um, for the, uh, the All Aboard 2017 week event. And also the, the website, which will provide access to all those materials, uh, will be ready for that as well. 
Um, I should point out that the materials themselves were, if you remember, developed so that they're completely downloadable, repurposable, and can be deployed in other platforms. So if somebody likes some of the lessons, they don't have to go onto our website to access them, uh, to use them. They can download them and embed them in their own virtual learning environments or whatever suits. But we do have a little connection back to our badging platform that lets us know when people are using them so we can actually measure the spread and the impact. Um, we're doing a little bit of technical work in the background. Again, we'll be talking to Colin about this again. He'll be happy to hear uh, some of the technical aspects of the, of the records store that's on the, on the actual website. Um, if people want to know about that, we can discuss it more. Uh, and also, we've started the evaluation of the student partnership projects. Uh, so that's going to be really useful, and it'll feed into the pack that we're, we're preparing currently which is a pack that people can download so they can run these types of student partnership projects in their institution as well. And it's full of all the resources and materials that you need. In terms of sustainability and future development, we do have a plan for that. And uh, it's just to reassure you once again, as we said from the beginning, early on in the project, that if we felt the project was going to be successful, that at least NUI Galway's uh, Centre for Excellence in Learning and Teaching would continue to maintain the server, continue to add materials to it, and facilitate the conversion of materials from other projects and other contributors so we can con continue with that commitment. There's, there's no difficulty. We're changing the way that we do our internal training to make all the materials Creative Commons, to make them all shareable and to neutrally brand them as well. So this fits very much with our own institutional strategy and it's uh, making something available for the wider sector. That's it. Um, that's okay.